Um, this morning, we're going to continue in Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to begin with a foundational text. Then we're going to analyze scriptures 7 through 13 for context. Amen. And this morning, we're talking about a healthy church. That's what we're dealing with. A healthy church. That's Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to be reading from verses. 7 through 13 for context. Then we're going to be dealing with verses 13. I'm sorry, 7 through 16. Then we're going to be dealing with verses 13 through 16 for context. Amen. Healthy church. And it reads, now grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. For it says, when he ascended on high, he took captives captive. He gave gifts to people. But what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower parts of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens to fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with the statue measured by Christ's fullness. Then we will be no longer like little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way unto him who is the head, Christ. From him the whole body, fitted and knitted together by every support and ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we truly do thank you and we honor you for this time of worship, for this time of fellowship, and most importantly, for this time to unify together and sit at your feet. Teach us so we can be more unified and giving you glory and honor in our commitment to the faith. Father, we thank you right now for I submit to you, Father, so you can use me to teach your people so we can be unified in the faith and in the knowledge of you, God's Son. It's in your Son, Jesus' name we do pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Uh, we're still talking about the church and how the church, the church operates and, and what makes um, a strong church. And, and this week we're going to be talking about a mature church. Um, what makes a mature church and how we grow as a mature church as a collective. Now, when we biblically define maturity, we will find that it looks nothing like how the world defines maturity. Um, our maturity is founded in the likeness of Jesus Christ. And if we're going to grow into maturity, we have to understand what maturity looks like. Amen. Because you, you could be one that can have a lot of things. You can have a lot of influence. You can have a lot of social power. You can have a great network. You can have money and all of these things, but that does not define your maturity. Now, there's four truth with it, truth within verses 13 through 16 that are applicable principles that we can apply as a collective that will cause us to grow in maturity. The number one is maturity involves a Christ likeness, and we're going to break all this down. Two, maturity involves doctrinal stability. Three, maturity involves truth joined with love. And four, maturity involves contribution. Now, last week we talked about the offices Jesus used to establish the church the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Here is used to equip the church for the work of the ministry. But what is the work of the ministry? The work of the ministry is to build up the body of Christ. 
The body of Christ is built up when we are unified in the faith and in the knowledge of God's son, which is Jesus. When this happens, the church grows in maturity. Now, this is what we're going to pick up from last week. And we're going to pick up and be part of verse 13, a statue measured by Christ's fullness. And this is what we're going to deal with first this morning. Verse 13. And so we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's son, growing in maturity with a statue measured by Christ's fullness. What does this mean? A statue measured by Christ's fullness. See, this, this is maturity that's involving Christ's likeness. So in other words, Christ becomes the standard in which we live. Now, a biblical illustration of this is in Philippians chapter 3, Paul's pursuit of the goal, the goal being Christ. Now, this is important for us to really see in the text and embrace in the text because in the church, we have really gotten off track by pursuing stuff and not pursuing Christ, pursuing things, not pursuing Christ, pursuing things that the world presents and not pursuing Christ. Amen. Because as a Christian, when we pursue things outside of Christ, we come in error to our purpose, right? Meaning, if we pursue, we pursue money, what is it going to do? It's going to guide us out the direction of pursuing Christ. You, it, it's even dangerous for us to pursue our careers, pursue our jobs. Anything we pursue outside of Christ, it causes us to be in a place in our life that is against what Christ ordained us to do and be. Now, when we look at Philippians chapter 3, and we're not going to spend too much time on it. You can go back and study it on your own. But Paul talks about the pursuit of the goal, the goal being the perfection that is in Christ. Right now, this is very, very, th this is, this is, this is something that people outside of Christianity can't understand about pursuing Christ, because as a believer, we know we'll never arrive. Right. In this time, we are never arrived to perfection in Christ, but because of the pursuit that Christ has given to us, we can't help but pursue him. Amen. I know I won't, I never be perfect, but see people in the world are like, well, why even pursue perfection if you're not, you're not, you're not going to be perfect because he pursued me. See that that's the thing. See, when you're work-based, you're trying to pursue a perfection that's not in Christ. But when you're kingdom and you're pursuing the perfection that's in Christ, you, you understand that this pursuit is only because he first pursued me. I love him because he first loved me. I'm chosen not because I chose him, but he first chose me. That's the difference. I understand I'll never get here in this life. But because he got his hand, see, that's what it means for God to have his hand on your life, not by how much stuff you got. See, the church has really messed up and has handicapped and destructed the faith of many believers because the church has presented things in this world as evidence that God's hand is on your life. And that's not the case. The evidence that God's hand is on your life is because you pursue Christ. No matter how that pursuit looks. Because I ask pursuit, it's going to look different than mine. Amen. But if I see the fruit of pursuit, it shows that the hand of God is on his life. Amen. Are you pursuing? See, that Christ is the goal, not stuff. Christ is the goal, not your job. Christ is the goal, not your ambitions. Amen. Prosperity in the kingdom is the pursuit of Christ. Period. No calm. Amen. Our goal in the morning when we rise is to pursue him. Amen. Amen. Our goal before we rest is to make sure that our pursuit as we live that life that day was worthy. 
of Christ's glory. And if it wasn't, Lord, give me the strength to pursue you. Amen. Give me the wisdom to pursue you. Because it takes a wise man or woman to pursue Christ. You have to have the wisdom to say no. Because I'm Christian. That, 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 that statement right there was not, not highlighted or vocalized in the society that we live in the right way. Amen. Let's look at this. Verse 14. Then we will no longer be like little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching. By every cunning with cleverness in the techniques of the seat. Look, look how God, look what truth God is showing us that, that, that people that deceive you, they're technical with it. There's a strategy to it. See, witchcraft is not somebody who got on all black with a pot and a broomstick. No, witchcraft is somebody who's using the Bible to control you away from righteousness. Because guess what? The gospel, a man don't have to control people with the gospel. Amen. But the essence of witchcraft is control. And men is using deception to control people. Right. And it's because people are immature. Look at, look at the analogy that Paul is using when he say children, that you would not be like little children. Little children are not mature. They have to be taught. They're not stable. They're not solidified in their faith. Amen. And because of this, they're tossed to and fro. This is why you got what's called church hoppers. If you're a person, you can't find yourself part of a community more, no more than a year. It ain't the, the community the problem is you and, and, and you're your, your, your receiving false teaching. Amen. We need to die to false teaching. Amen. Because maturity, watch this, write this down. It invokes doctrinal stability. See, when you're mature, you seek stability in the word. Amen. Amen. When you mature, you don't listen to any and everything. Let me, let me testify something to you. I used to listen to men of God like T.D. Jakes. Amen. As in his career flow dollar. But the more I grew in the faith, the more that teaching started to irritate me. Amen. I couldn't listen to that stuff anymore. Because if it isn't truth, it's not stability. See, when you, you know when you're mature, you just can't listen to any and everything. Amen. It don't satisfy you. It don't matter what the crowd is saying. Amen. It, it, it's about what they are saying. When you're mature, you're looking for doctrinal stability, not emotional stability. Amen. See, a mature Christian is looking for the shout. An immature, I'm sorry. An immature Christian is looking for the shout, but a mature Christian is looking for God. I need to know what God says about this matter, not what the preacher said. I need truth. See, you will know a body of believers is growing together in Christ because they demand truth. Can't know anybody come in here and teach. I thank God. God is building a church like that. Can't know anybody stand up here and teach. We ain't going to receive it. Why? Because it has to be truth for us to receive. Because we, 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 we invoke doctrinal stability. Maturity will cause one to be planted in the faith. Because we're invoking doctrinal stability. And because we're invoking this, we're planted in the faith. You can't tell a mature Christian no anything. They can't tell you anything. You can't go for no anything. Just because it sounds good don't mean I'm rocking with it. Come on. I'm, I'm talking with, see, when you're mature, you have to come with the word. 
Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and a the stranger they won't find. What you think he was talking about? Jesus was talking about teaching. See, mature Christian knows the teachings of Christ from the teachings of men. And the problem with the church is we haven't grown up yet. This is why we're drawn by every wind of die. Everything sound good, we with it. Everybody tell us my breakthrough coming, we will. Oh, girl, he told me it's coming in 40 days. And guess what, girl? Give the revelation he came. They fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And he told me, if I fast 40 days and 40 nights, my Boaz is coming. You're an immature Christian. Because a mature Christian would be like, girl, I, how was last night? It was foolish. This man told me my Boaz coming if I fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. That's a mature Christian. That's not biblical. So when they took up an offering, I left. Because that's not big, but the immature Christian that gave her, gave her life the other way. What, what that means tickling my ear? That means that I'm listening for what sound good and what make me feel good. Ooh, girl, I, I, I pastor preached today what he preached about. I don't know, but we were shout. We had a good time in the Lord. Well, what did you learn, Ned? I shouted, though, man, I know my breakthrough coming. He prayed for me. He laid hands on me. I felt the house stand up on my back. I got chia bumps. You're immature. Because you're looking for God in all the wrong places. Well, where God at in his word? You don't like to read, though. Too much going on in your mind. Too many reels in you. Amen. I'm just telling the truth. Amen. Because as a church, we're not going to grow until we pursue Christ in all things. Amen. 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 2 says, says it like this. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound but according to their own desires will multiply teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. That's, that's an immature Christian. I want to hear what I want to hear. Not what God said. See, I'm a mature God. I want to hear you even if it hurt me. They will turn away from hearing the truth and will turn aside to myths. Now, this, this is a very scary text, and let me tell you why. Because it's not talking about the world, it's talking about the church. So let's read this again, now that we know who this is talking about. For times will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine. So a time is here right now where the church is not tolerating sound doctrine. The church. Yeah. But I could tell you some stories that'll rock your mind about me, men, and false teachers. Yes, yeah, so we just ain't got time. I'm thinking about I'm gonna write a book about my experiences with false doctrine. Yeah, because they got me coming out the feds. Yeah, took me under their wing. Told me how anointed I am. Told me how powerful I was without telling me how to die. Because only the gospel can teach you how to die. All the rest of this stuff going to teach that that should die how to live. It's going to puff you up. It's going to have you thinking that you're special. It's in ears. We want, we want to hear this. Come on, I would love to come to fellowship every Sunday and, 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 and hear that stuff. I mean, it makes you feel good, but it's not a reality. They are a liar. Somebody say they're lying. Yeah, they're lying. The, 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 the deception. You can't deceive somebody with the truth. <laughs> the essence of deception is lying. <laughs> The very nature of a deceiver is a liar. You can't deceive without lying. I can't deceive you if I tell you the truth. When we gonna wake up, church? Because the Bible is explicitly telling us what it means to be mature. If you're seeking a word from the Lord that's not a word from the Lord, you're immature. The 
what it say. Verse 14, we're going to read it again. Then we'll no longer be like little children, Ephesians 4 and 14, tossed by the waves, blown around by every wind of teaching. Every wind of teaching. Every wind of teaching. Not a rainstorm. Every wind of doctrine, teaching. Tossed to and fro, what that mean? That mean when I hear something new over here, I go over here. Somebody tell me that my car coming, I go over here. I'm going to this revival. I'm going to this, this conference. I'm going to this. And none of that stuff got nothing to do with the death, best burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. Has nothing to do with that. Verse 15. But speaking the truth, this look, ooh, this good right here, y'all. This good man, I'm finna take my time with them. We, but speaking the truth in love, yeah. let us grow in every way into Him who is the head, Christ. You cannot grow in Christ without speaking the truth in love. Because, 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 let me let me show you where America has messed us up. America has said that love is inclusion. That means love is acceptance. And I, I, because I love you, I, got, I accept you. No, I don't accept anything. Amen. I love everybody, but I can't accept everybody. It's a difference. Amen. I ain't letting you in my, I ain't letting anybody in my house because I love them. It's called having standards. Which is something that we're missing in this generation. We have no standards. We have no morals. And the reason why we have no standards and morals is because we don't have Christ. And we don't have Christ because we don't have sound doctrine. It's called the faith. It's the doctrine of Jesus Christ. It's what we believe. It's how we govern ourselves. And it's a shame. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, we get more preaching on people than we do on Jesus. Sunday after Sunday. Exalting me. Your leader, your pastor, your bishop, your man of God. The prophet told me. But what, what, what about what Jesus told you? Right. My shepherd. The, Jesus is our shepherd. <laughs> chief. Y'all know they try to call me a chief apostle. Yeah. They tried me, boy. They tried me. They put it on. Look, they made it look good, too. They, 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 look, they photoshopped. They took a nice Photoshop picture of me. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, it looked very professional. I told him, take it out. Take it down. Take that down. Them folks left their church too, the one that did it. They really felt, they was angry because, you know, they're trying to help us out. No. 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 Get, get what? Man, folk can leave me here talking to this camera, and I'll be just as fine before I exalt myself. I'm not going to allow people to exalt me above Jesus Christ. I'm not perfect, but this one thing I do, I press towards the mark of the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus. How many people really got that? I ain't got it together. I have not arrived. I am not perfect, but I press towards the mark. That's the sign of maturity. Are you pressing? Towards Jesus, or are you pressing toward what that prophet told you? Are you pressing towards Jesus? Or are you so locked in the false doctrine that you can't even see you're broken? Because that's how I was. Broken, anger issues, because I'm broken. <laughs> Mad because I'm broken. But there's only one healer. See, my pastor couldn't heal me, but he kept telling me everything you need is in your pastor. 
Boy, that's, if that ain't anti-Christ, I don't know what it is. That's anti-Christ. Because you have men that and don't see, see, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me touch on this real quick. See, Satan can prophesy in that manner. Not in truth, but in that manner. And when I say that manner, false prophecy. Let me take prophecy off of it. He can read your palm. He can, he can, he can, he can, what, what you call, he, he can, he's a fortune teller. Yeah. So if you're looking for God and, and telling your future, you, 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 you tripping already. You're, you're immature because this how they got me. They told me my future. I was facing 60 years in life in the feds. And this man told me you would never do a day in jail. And when I didn't do a day in jail, he became God. Now, from that point on, I started ignoring stuff that God would show me. Like, no, man, God, ain't no way this man could tell me the future. Now, understand that, hey, even Ray Charles can see that. Ray Charles could have seen that God, God's hand was on my life. Ray Charles could see that God had a destiny for me. Ray Charles could see that. Tell me the gospel. Tell me how to die. Don't tell me my future. Because that's God's will. It's going to happen regardless. See, that's what I didn't understand. That regardless of what man said, God's will was going to be done anyway. So is it more profitable for me to sit up here an hour telling you your future? Or is it more profitable for me sitting up here telling you the gospel? What's more profitable? But people want to hear their future. Why do you want to hear your future? And you might mess it up. You need to hear what's going to sustain you in your future that's not promised. <laughs> it ain't even promised you'll wake up tomorrow. So why are you worried about it? Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow. So why are you listening to a prophet that's telling you about tomorrow? Come in here and drive Holy Spirit. You don't even supposed to be thinking about tomorrow. But you're so caught up on the prophetic word. That's not prophecy for real. Because true prophecy is when I give you instructions through the word of God. I'm preaching the word, declaring the word. And through the Holy Spirit, sensing what you need through the word. In other words, prophecy is governed through the word. Not your future. Unless it's a future in hope with the Bible talking about. We, at that point, we're talking about what? Eternity. See, maturity is when we can tell each other the truth in love. It's not accepting your standard. It's, it's rejecting your standard in love while exalting him, his standard. Amen. Because if I can't tell you the truth, I don't love you. There's no way I can love you if I don't tell you the truth, no matter how much it hurts you. I just got to make sure it's in love. Look what the Bible telling us. But see, the world is different. We can't tell, no, I don't want to offend nobody. What kind of leader is scared to offend? We're living in a time where leaders are scared to offend. You, you're not ready. You're not no pastor. You're not no leader. You're not a kingdom citizen, a mature one, rather, if you can't tell people the truth in love. That's the only way we're going to grow. If we don't share the truth with one another, we're hindering one another. Look at say, but speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into Jesus. See that? And to him who is the head, Christ, and to Jesus. So we first start out by what? Speaking love. Speaking truth in love. I'm sorry. Verse 16, from him, the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building itself up in love by the proper working of each individual part. Maturity involves contribution. Meaning God has designed 
every single believer to contribute to the body in every single way. So if you're a believer and you're not contributing to the body, you are hindering the maturity or the opportunity to mature and grow as a body. We're not talking about individuals right here. Amen. So, so, so that's just like, let's look at the body. If my hand, if my arm get cut off, my body can still live. It can still function in a way, but I'm handicapped. I can't thrive the way the body is ordained to thrive. I mean, I had a stroke. I still got all my body parts, but the part, a part of my body took a hit, the head which affects every other part of the body. So in the same way, Grove, if you're the arm and you're missing, the body still can function and live, but the arm is missing. So the body can't thrive like it would thrive if the arm was there. If you lost your right arm right now, you're handicapped. You're still living, but you're handicapped because you've been living with the right arm. It's different if you was born without the right arm but if you've been living, if we've been living and thriving with Grove and all of a sudden one day Grove is missing, it's going to hurt the body because the body's not used to living without the arm. But now, let's go deeper with this. It ain't just talking about Grove being present. The body is talking about the gifting of Grove being active. It's not just talking about Grove being here. Because you can be here and not here the way that God called you to be here. He's saying every gift and operation in the body makes the church mature. So get what? You could be hindering my growth. I could be hindering your growth. If I decide not to show up, I could be hindering your growth. That's what the Bible, that's what the Bible is telling us. From him, the whole body, knit, fitted and knitted together by every supporting ligament. That's every individual that's part of the body of Christ. Every one of us. The feet, the toe, the, 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 the toe can't tell the hand that it's not important. The hand can't tell the toe is not important. Everybody part is working together, is knitted together with every supporting ligament in order to operate. And that's the same way in the body of Christ. That's how we function. It promotes the growth of the body for building itself up in love by the proper working of each individual part. You see that? So we're stronger when we function together. That's that's what the that's what it's saying. It's just like our natural body. But the way that we function is the thing. It's not us just showing up and functioning in some religious fashion and think that we're maturing and growing in Christ. No, it's we're showing up and look what we're doing. We're speaking the truth in love. We're promoting and invoking doctrinal stability. We're measuring our maturity by the perfection that's in Jesus Christ. See that? When we're doing all these things, that's when we grow as a body. Amen? Amen. And that's how we promote healthy community. Amen? All right, so let us give, give a hand clap of praise for the Lord. Amen? That's our word for today. Do we have any questions or comments or anything that's pressing on someone's heart? Right now is the time to ask.